Okay, guys, so as y'all can see by the chocolate rainbow we got here in the, in the degas bottle, we got a diesel in the cooling issue with this truck. I already got a video of cleaning the fuel tank out. I knew this this uh, this 7.3 had some injector cup issues and some other stuff. So we got a few other little clips from a few months back that, um, you know, cleaning the fuel tank, fuel tank mod, some uh, sensor rewiring maybe. But... Uh, so back to this on the injector cups, uh, Tristan, who y'all seen on the channel a few times, has the same injector cup problem and the same diesel getting into coolant as this truck does. So I offered to have him do a dry run on this truck and do the injectors, help me with uh, reshimming, re-o-ringing, and, and uh, doing injector cups on this truck. And that'll give him the skills to do what he needs to do on his truck. So I'm going to hand this over to him, and he's going to take y'all through uh, shimming injectors and re-o-ringing the injectors and reinstalling the cups and um, a few other little mods here and there. So let's get on to it. I'm going to hand it over to Tristan, and he's going to show y'all what we're working on. All right, y'all. What we're fixing to do next while the injectors are out of the truck, uh, we're gonna we're gonna measure for our tolerances within the uh, within the top solenoid here. Uh, they're out of spec. We're gonna shim them, uh, and we'll show you uh, closer how to do that. Uh, but this is where you can find the shim kit. Uh, we're also gonna be re-o-ringing them. Uh, you know, anytime you have your injectors out, you want to give them new o-rings if they're not, you know, basically new already. So we're gonna go ahead with that and try to make a video out of it. So all this is a pretty fun and interesting little uh, procedure here. Uh, the very first step, we're gonna pop these T15, I wanna say. I'm sorry, I believe it's a T20. This one don't say. But uh, some kind of torques. Uh, you're gonna buzz all four of them off. And the electronic, uh, the, Electromagnet solenoid will come right off. And as you can tell, these aren't very tight. So. Alright y'all, once y'all got the four torques out, uh, the head of the solenoid will pop right off. And actually, it's looking like this injector has been shimmed already. So uh, just be careful of that. If you're doing this in the motor, you do not want to drop any of these little metal shims inside the motor. But as you can see, well maybe you can't see, there are shims already present. They double shimmed them. Uh, so we're probably looking at five thou with these uh, combined. Yeah. So this one may have been uh, may have been inside of Tomatu. Some dirty oil, no. our last one right here make sure uh, want to make sure this all comes off and we get it real clean but uh, this is your armature plate this is uh, what we're after here let me give this a little wipe Yeah, as you can see, there is, uh, this would be factory, this small inverted Torx. It's a very small fastener, uh, and you have to be square dead nuts on the stri on, on the top of it for it to even catch, you know. Uh, we're going to see about getting that guy out. But uh, since this already most likely has a 4 mil shim at the bottom, we're going to test it for 
and as you can see this fourth aisle shim is not well it's kind of tight in there which uh, you, you want it to be snug but with um, you know with good uh, good range all the way across so this one may have to be re-looked at but uh All right, now that I semi-showed disassembly, uh, we're gonna go back on with reassembly. Uh, I got all this cleaned up. This is your two injector hold downs and your armature plate should sit uh, perpendicular to that. Um, with a four, four, I'm sorry, four thousandths shim underneath it. So we'll go in through the top the bolt and grab a 0 0.004 four thousandths of an inch shim yeah. the four thousandths is uh you only use one four thousandth shim on each injector we'll show y'all on the uh, so you get your inject, uh, you get your armature plate, shim him, make sure it's clean, and stab him back in now, just like that. And these are not super tight at all. Um, if I'd have to guess, maybe. Not even gonna give you a guess because I mean, uh, so I don't want to tell you any bad information, but hand snug is all she really needs. Okay. Four uh, thousand shim in there, and then on the solenoid, we'll put our bolts in. Three and four, and then we're going on on each bolt with one three thousandths and one two thousandths, with a total of five. And um, I like to put the smaller shim at the bottom, wider shim at the top. You'll see. And I'm going to pull out four two thousandths inch shims and four of the three. And go. And you do want to make sure that you don't accidentally double shim it because they are real thin and they like to stick together. So watch that. So I'm gonna go ahead with my uh, point threes or point oh threes, making sure that I'm only doing one. And I'll come back with the the, the twos. Well, I made a mistake, but I caught it. If we put the if we stack these shims together, that would give us a that would give us a total of seven thousandths. This is the one I should have. Uh, so I'm gonna have to find some more of the point oh twos. And uh, we'll get that corrected. Well, I stay corrected, corrected because uh, I've already done the point twos. Um, this here is a point four, and that's only used on the bottom of the armature plate. And I'm just verifying that that's not what we have here. 
and actually I don't believe this number four will actually fit onto this bolt the uh, diameter of the hole looks too small so that's probably for the best but uh, you just want to you know take your time when you're doing this I'm to get to that magic five thousandths uh, of an inch tolerance and don't do that <laughs> shoot smaller shim bigger I'm gonna grab it by the bolts when you flip it over. Okay. Yeah, this this already has our notch modification. Uh, we'll show that to you next. Okay. I'm just gonna verify here with my four thousandths gauge. That's, that's much better than what we was having. And that's what you want. You want about four thousandths of open space all the way around. Should be good to go. Okay. You want to line up your spacer plate with the notch on the back side facing up if you'd have this facing up you know uh, when we flip it over it should look like this on the injector so that will go on uh, this is your downspout hold down that'll be on the same side as your electrical connector so you line that up drop them down And again, these are not tight much at all. Uh, try to get them to the torque that, you know, they came off by hand. Okay. Now we're gonna put new O-rings and uh, we'll show you how to do this uh, mod. Um. All righty guys. Uh, next step in the process, we're gonna take our armature spacer and on one of the flats, we're gonna butt it up to a flat. And then using two of our uh, injector bolts, we're going to just start them just to keep it in place. This here is an inverted Torx. The, the letter on it is E5. And uh, this was a Harbor Freight one. Uh, it actually had to be modified to fit onto this. Uh, but, but you want to make sure that you get a good bite on this screw. Because it's tiny and it doesn't take much for it to strip out. We got trees falling. <laughs> Damn. Petey's going off. <laughs> but uh, you want to make sure that you set on this bolt. And it's not super tight. It's just super tedious. That's all it really takes. Uh, but yeah, you gotta get straight up and down with this bolt. Do not wanna strip him.
So uh, once that's loose, you can back them out, and we'll show you the next step of the process. Good. All right. Next step in the process, so uh, we're gonna clamp these in the vise, sandwich them to where to where they're exactly aligned. We're gonna center punch a hole right in the gap and drill a 3 16 hole, splitting splitting the circle between the two. So when you unclamshell these two, you'll have a semi-circle right here. So the reason we're doing this modification is to help with uh, some stiction related problems, I believe. This is the weep hole for the top end of the, the injector, the armature side. And uh, it can only drain up to this this hole. You know, there's, there's still gonna be uh, a good bit of oil that's in between the armature and the top of the injector. So you wanna make sure it has in one plane as possible. That'll help you with the drilling. Like crank them down and like I said we'll get a center punch on it and there we go you want it about in between split the gap between the hole and the edge but you don't want it too close to the edge no? I'm gonna go ahead and punch this side actually It's, it's all about the start of the of the cut so a good evenly distributed hole and uh, got a 3 16 drill bit you just want to start slow because you can always you can always take off but Start, look at that. Straight up down the middle, and we'll ride with that. Okay, you want to make sure you clean all this very well before it goes back in the truck. Aluminum shavings is not good for a Ford Power Stroke diesel. Not the worst for it, but it ain't good for it. Okay, and as you can maybe see, we have in, in fact split the difference and created semi-circles in the... So what this mod does basically is it allows the oil in the top end of the injector around the armature plate to drain away from the armature plate. That armature plate is being, at every pulse, it, it's being pulled up and down, well, it's being pulled up by the magnet. If it has to push a bunch of oil out of the way, it's not going to get full travel. So you want to make sure you don't have excess oil in there. So we're going to go ahead with that mod. Right. One important step. Uh, you want to deburr any of any shavings that you made. I mean, uh, any burrs, you know. I'm gonna get in there on the back side and just like that. Alrighty, guys. Now that we got our armature plate nut cracked loose and the hand tight, it'll pop out of there. We are not reusing this little small bolt. Uh, the kit uh, comes with new bolts, which is a much better head on it. And uh, we want to make sure all these surfaces are clean before they go back. Okay, so one last time. Done did this seven times by now. But, uh, Got your new uh, T20 Torx armature plate goes on along with a 
0.004 shim, which is the clearance you want to have is you know, four thousandths of an inch. You can get that on. But uh, we'll slap one of these underneath the armature plate, and then we'll uh, we'll get our extra five thousandths on top, and then this puppy should go back together. Make sure you don't have eight thousandths. Make sure it's just a single on there. It's maybe a T15, I'm sorry. They all look small. But uh, like I said, you're gonna line up your armature plate. Uh, with the lines being perpendicular and we're gonna once again take our spacer and use it as a hold back take two of our bolts Again, you don't have to get super crazy tight with these. It's about the hand tight that they came off with. Perfectly fine. Okay. We'll retrieve our bolts. Put them back in. And double shim them one more time. Go on with the uh, Four threes and four twos, making it four fives. Okay. Four twos. And we ought to be in good shape. Okay, everything's clean. Uh, your armature, if it's free, it ought to turn like this. That just verifies everything in the injectors. Happy. If it's locking up, then uh, not happy. So do our uh, point twos first. Point twos. And the point threes. Point three. Put your spacer ducting down and away from the electrical connection. Grab them. And this is the way she'll sit. And go. Alright y'all, uh, final step uh, before going back with injectors, uh, we're going to re-o-ring and make sure they're clean. Uh, first thing is the uh, the, the split uh, steel ring, you're going to get that at the, at the very front of the, uh, the injector. Okay, ne next step uh, would be your uh, square, uh, it's not an O-ring, it's a square uh, square O-ring, uh, we're going to put that right after him. They have some white markings on the outside of the square ring, if you flip the O-ring you won't be able to see them, so you should be able to see two white stripes on the, uh, on the Ford, on the Ford, uh, 
ne next o-ring to go in is this uh, bigger black one uh, this is the actual o-ring that seals the pressure the uh, the ones before it were just to back up this one so we'll put a uh, put him all the way down uh, then goes the tough to get on a uh, pink one uh, I found to use a pick with this uh, you face it down and away from you and get as far as you can on one side there you go on one side and try not to scratch the metal kind of work it around once and you can get it in that groove and then roll it the rest of the way with our uh, orange uh, your copper washer here is gonna be embossed on one side and uh, and indented on the on the other so you, you want to put the proud side facing up like so and with around a 10 millimeter socket or smaller maybe uh, you can tap this into place and it'll bottom out pretty easy. But uh, just want to inspect, making sure, and we we'll want to keep them clean before they go back in. So, just like so. And you want to. Uh... Alright, guys, uh, back before we go in with injected cups and we, we make sure, double check all our. Uh, holes are clean. Uh, I'm just gonna go back over these inject the hold down bolts before we go in Because uh, once you get the your hold down on there, you won't be able to to get to these bolts So all I'm gonna do is uh, double check that they're ready to go and that uh, See that that one moved a little bit, so we're just double checking the torque on them Same with that one What's your torque on that? Uh, 10 foot pounds. So I got a quarter inch. Uh, no, I don't give a lot. A uh, quarter inch torque wrench. That'll be 120 inch pounds. So if you're gonna convert foot pounds to inch pounds, you gotta what? Multiply by. Yes. Uh, times 12. Uh, okay. 12 inches and a foot. All righty, guys. Uh, this is the install tool. Uh, we ran a little oil on the O-ring for it to, you know slide in and out better but you want to make sure it's all the way seated and you don't contaminate any of the outside uh, sure. got our Loctite 620 retaining compound and see if I can show you about how much to you just want a pretty consistent uh, bead And then I say consistent and then I do this. You kind of work it around, but you want to get it on, you know, the full circumference. Uh, on the on this flat and as well as the top flat. Kind of work that around, making sure you got all, all the way around covered. Uh, right, when you're ready. Alrighty, uh, I keep saying alright. It don't matter. Roll with it. Okay. Uh, you want to make sure you go in uh, semi straight, and you don't want to rough up your surface too much. But um. Kind of find the center and it'll center itself most most likely uh, we got a rubber mallet we gotta start with and just kind of work them work them down they could be a little stiff but you'll be able to hear a a, a tone change whenever it actually bottoms out about like that i like to give them a little more with the steel
How do you tell if it's bottomed out all the way? Uh, if you can see, I know. I know we can't see on camera, but you can explain it. Yes, sir. Or if you I might be able to. You might. Uh, uh, you can see the top of the cup is uh is right right below the oil uh galley. You can see that little small hole right on the right side of that cup. Uh, the the rim of the top of the cup should be right below, I'd say maybe a sixteenth of an inch before the port. And uh, that's the diesel port. Yes, or that that'd be fuel. But uh, when in doubt, give it a few more smacks, and uh, you should be able to get a a, a pretty good confirmation by the sound. And you want but uh, you, yes, you want to come back in, and uh, the. As you can see, the green here, that's where your O-rings are going to be sealing. So we don't want any excess compound. So we're just going to go ahead and wipe them out. And make sure you got a good maiden surface, and that's about all there is to it, really. Okay, guys, we're just taking a little, little rotella, putting a little dab on these O-rings. We already had them oiled up from install, but they spent the night. So, just want to too much lubrication is better than not enough. We don't want to roll an O-ring. Okay, double checking our copper crush washer. Uh, we have the embossed side up and all our o-rings look to be happy so we're gonna pop them right in there so how do you tell if, a, if an o-ring is happy or sad uh, <laughs> <laughs> if it's on Xanax <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you'd be able to you can see actually on the o-ring there's a mid there's a kind of a waistline uh, I guess that's when they was making it or but but you can see all the way around that the o-ring is in fact uh not rolled or not, twisted not rolled or twisted cool uh, so we're gonna go in straight try not to pinch nothing uh, once uh once he hit it down far enough and holding back on his collar uh pushing up on it once you get it far down enough the collar will be able to slide back and at that point uh, a neat tip is to get a 5 8 stubby uh, wrench and that'll fit on the back side of this collar and you can pry down on it and while, while you smack it that does a good job of getting it to where it needs to go so you just got to hook you got to get it down enough to hook the top bolt Right. And then you can push the bottom with get the... It, get it most of the rest of the way down. And then you can come in with your, uh, your second inject the hold down bolt and suck it up the rest of the way. But once you can catch a few threads, it uh, should be golden. And what we're just doing is just putting a putting it in there kind of running it in hand tight we already torqued the other ones to 10 and we'll come back and torque these after but this is just to to hold that cup down and keep everything seated good so we'll put a little bit of a a snugging on it and um we'll get all the all of one bank all one side in and then come back and torque the bottom bolts to 10. Right, so we over here giving them a quick torque down with the torque wrench to 10 foot pounds just take your time and go slow because you're pushing the o-rings down mm -hmm. and they may um you know it may travel a little bit and it is fine thread on those so you may turn it a little bit more than you think you're going to turn it but take your time go slow and shoot when you get your click that's it one click that's it
it's funny to me on these small bolts it always feels like it god it's like come on and click because i'm about to break the bolt and then when you're torquing a big bolt it clicks and you're like well shit that's not even tight you know I hear the acorns on the shop roof. I think the squirrels are bombing us again. We were dropping acorn bombs yesterday. It sounded like World War II in the, when the acorns are falling on the roof. All right, guys, next thing to go on is the injected downspouts. Uh, you got a five millimeter Allen key. And you just kind of work it around, making sure not to drop this bolt somewhere you don't need it. Just be careful of that. And Alrighty, fellas. Uh, I think one of the most important things you can remember when doing this job is the very first thing you want to do after you get under the, underneath the valve cover is pull every glow plug on the engine. Uh, that's the first thing you do and the last thing you do right before you put the valve cover back on. Uh, but uh, what, what we're going to do is to burp the engine, uh, we're going to spin it over by hand and I'm just placing the valve cover in place. just to uh, catch any of that flying oil and I'm not even gonna put the gasket on there just uh, there we are and just get a couple bolts in there uh, well I had to shoot another outro we had some corrupted files and I lost a little bit of the tail end of this. So if I remember correctly where we were uh, when the, with the good files was we had just put, torqued all the injectors down. We still had the glow plugs out and we were setting the valve covers on there with a couple of hand tight bolts. So that's where we were. So what we're doing is, you know, when you pull the injectors, you're gonna get a lot of a mix of coolant, diesel and oil in the cylinders. Uh, if you're doing injectors one at a time and you do them quickly, you can alleviate some of that. But doing the cups and all of that, there's no way to get around it. So uh, we put the valve covers back on. We barred the motor over two or three rotations to force out the bulk of the liquid, which would just come out under the valve cover and then drain back into the bottom of the pan. And then after that, you can bump it with the starter and a few times. And if everything sounds good, you can spin it. And let it spray out and all of that spray is going to be under the valve cover so you don't get it all over the engine bay and outside the truck and once you have that done you can go back to putting you know we didn't put our valve cover harness on you can do that you know whatever how whatever order you want but that's why when i'm doing injectors i'll pull the glow plugs first and they go back in last that way it reminds me while they're out i gotta burp everything so we went back in we talked to all the glow plugs put the valve covers back on and um, got that done and then once we were done with that we had to get over here and the pump is still here so you can see um, what we did here is because we knew we had milky diesel and a water and a fuel light so what I did is I popped off the blue suction line which is a larger one and I stuck it into a can of diesel right here over the axle we cycled the key a few times with the return line still hooked to the tank. And the object of that was to suck the fuel all the way up to the engine bay, through the filter, and all the way back to push all of that old cloudy, nasty diesel into the tank. So after we ran a couple of gallons through there, that should have flushed the lines. All the crap should be in the tank. So we pulled the bolts off here, cleaned the tank. And I have a video of doing that on this truck when I first got it and only put a little bit of diesel left in it after diesel in it after that to test run it and debug it until i could get around to 
actually working on it. So uh, that in a nutshell is what we got done so far on this truck. We got a lot more to come and I got some good announcements to make on this truck uh, for an upcoming project I'll be making shortly. But that catches y'all up on here and, and uh, kind of deals with the footage that we lost. So hopefully you got, uh, got some entertainment out of watching Tristan get it done. He did a really good job. And uh, for his first time with injectors, I was impressed. And um, we may get some video of him doing his injectors uh, at some point here in the near future. So, but as far as this truck goes, we got some things coming up with it. And I'll be making an announcement on that shortly. But... Hopefully you guys learned a few things and uh, enjoyed the video and we'll see y'all on the next one.